afternoon, everyone. Um, let's go ahead and get started with our uh, PA Sunbox information session. Thank you so much for joining us. Um, please note that this session is being recorded um, and uh, we really appreciate your uh, participation and your engagement this afternoon. My name is Dawn Plummer. I'm the director of the Pennsylvania Food Policy Council. I'm really excited today to partner with the Departments of Human Services and Education um, to share more information about uh, this critical uh, program, the Sunbucks program, um, with you, who I know are many advocates and partners across the Commonwealth, um, who are also really excited to see this newly created program in Pennsylvania. Um, I wanted to kick us off first with a big thank you to each of you who have worked hard to, to make this program a reality, whether you've in your communities answered questions, helped connect families to the program previously, are, are currently sharing information uh, about the program. Really appreciate your hard work and advocacy that has brought this uh, program here to the, to the Commonwealth for Pennsylvania kids and families. Um, also want to acknowledge and uh, appreciate the tireless uh, work of our uh, state agency staff who have been working very hard to stand this program up, particularly in the Departments of Human Services and Education, uh, several of whom are with us um, here this afternoon. Um, I wanted to just sort of give a quick uh, overview of what to expect um, this afternoon. Um, we will be, uh, you know, the pur our purpose here is to give an overview of the program, how it's going to work, uh, what to expect, um, what applicants can expect and, and recipients as well. Um, uh, our agenda is, is quite simple. It's introduction. Um, I'm going to give a little bit of background for those of you who aren't familiar with the Food Policy Council, um, and then we'll hear about the PA Sunbucks program. Uh, and then we'll have time for for uh, questions and answers. So really looking forward to your thoughts uh, and and questions as well. Um, just a couple of housekeeping um, instructions. Um, if you could uh, remain on mute, uh, we'll, we anticipate a sizable group, so appreciate that. Also, please don't hesitate to ask questions in the chat um, if they come to your mind. Um, we will be answering them during the Q&A, but please feel free to share them whenever you have them. Um, and then during the Q&A, we'll use the raise hand uh, feature to, uh, if you would like to speak, uh, to raise your hand and, and it'll create a queue and we'll answer one by one. Um, and then I also just invite you to try to avoid, and also my state friends, uh, state agency friends, to please try to avoid as much jargon and acronyms and industry language as we can to keep our languages understandable to, to you know, people who don't work in, in alphabet soup all day long, um, though I assume many of you probably do. Um, I will note just, you know, when we're talking about DHS, we're talking about Department of Human Services. Uh, uh, PDE is Department of Education. Um, and then lastly, just being conscious of time, we do have a brief time and this is uh, there's lots of questions. So uh, just be mindful of that when you uh, have an opportunity to uh, share your questions. Um, I did, again, just want to give a little bit of a, a, a overview of what the Food Policy Council is. Um, we are really excited to uh, see the development of programs like Sunbox in Pennsylvania. Um, and, uh, you know, a little background, the governor uh, appointed Food Policy Council brings together a statewide team that consists of uh, representatives from eight state agencies, um, you know, the various departments that touch the food system, as well as a 16 person advisory committee. Um, and this, you know, this body really brings together a diversity of voices and talents across our state's food systems. Um, I was brought on um, as the council's first director in February of 2023. Um, and really what we do is coordinate interagency and stakeholder group lead leaders um, to take up the important issues uh, before us that face our, our food system. Um, and for those of you who may have participated in former Governor Wolf's uh, food security partnership, the Food Policy Council builds on that work and essentially replaces it as an organization and has uh, staff. So we're really excited about that development. 
Um, so, you know, the, the core of what we do is listed here. This is language straight from the executive order 2022-05 that creates and establishes the Food Policy Council, but we're tasked with evaluating issues facing our food system, um, implementing strategies uh, to improve food security and nutrition and reduce food waste. We coordinate, as I mentioned, uh, interagency efforts design, uh, designated to reduce hunger and improve nutrition for Pennsylvanians across their lifespan. So, you know, from the uh, um, small children to older adults, we're looking at those questions across the lifespan. And then lastly, we facilitate uh, private and public sector efforts um, uh, to advance uh, our, you know, to advance uh, solutions to our food, food system challenges and support food sovereignty. So that's just a little bit of background on what we are. I should say too that I am uh, housed in the Department of Agriculture. I'm a governor appointed uh, staff member and the council is uh, uh, sort of reports to and makes recommendations to uh, Governor Shapiro. And just really quickly, lastly, um, if you want to get involved and sort of in the loop with the work of the Food Policy Council, I encourage you to visit our website. And I did link it here at the bottom, but sometimes I just Google Food PA Food Policy Council. It's a little quicker. Um, so check that out. Um, also, we do meet quarterly and we are able to, oh, I hear, see, somebody is not able to hear. I assume others can hear. Um, Haley, so I would maybe check. Uh, maybe uh, can maybe someone uh, uh, work with uh, Kaylee in the chat to address her issue, um, maybe make some suggestions. Um, but again, our, our council meeting meets uh, quarterly. Those are public meetings um, and you know the public is welcome to attend. We also always have opportunities for the public to, uh, we have a public comment period. If you have a concern or question you'd like to raise, there's an opportunity to do that. Um, our, our meetings are posted uh, on the, I'll actually put the link where the, the meetings are posted. Um, and if you're interested, we're putting together a more robust distribution list. So if you're interested in joining that list, also I invite you to share your contact information uh, uh, with me here at my email address. Uh, so that that covers um, the, the background that I wanted to provide. And so without any further ado, I'd like to invite Carl Feldman, who serves as the director of the Bureau of Policy with the Department of Human Services. Um, who's with us this afternoon and will be walking us through um, the nuts and bolts of our PA Sunbucks program. Um, and uh, uh, Carl, I'm happy to advance the slides. Uh, if you just want to say slide, I'll go ahead and advance. Okay. Uh, well, first, uh, can you hear me okay? Yes. All right, thank you very much. This is Carl Feldman, Director of the Bureau of Policy for the Office of Income Maintenance. Um, we make eligibility policy for the various state public benefits programs, and we're happy to be here with you in the Food Policy Council today to talk about Sunbucks. Um, and I'll be cognizant of Dawn's request that we don't get too much into jargon. I, I learned that Sunbucks actually is not an acronym. It uh, stands for Summer Nutrition, go figure. Um, that is the branding from USDA. Um, it's also known as the Summer Electronic Benefit Transfer program. Next slide, please. So uh, Sunbucks, known as SEBT, was created by Congress in 2023, and it is a permanent program for states and territories to opt and tribes to opt into. Pennsylvania uh, is opting into Sunbucks. It's included in the governor's uh, 24, 25 budget, and it is a ch child nutrition program. Uh, but as is stated here, unlike other child nutrition programs, this child nutrition program is operated through the Pennsylvania Department of Human Services with the support of the Pennsylvania Department of Education and a number of other um, educational entities around the state. What we mean when we say that is um, the one of the core elements, but not the only elements, as we'll get into, of eligibility is child receipt and eligibility for child nutrition benefits. Next slide, please. 
So here's some basic information on what Sunbucks is. It is a benefit uh, which amounts to $40 for each month of the, what's called the summer operational period. And in Pennsylvania, that means that the uh, benefit level will be $120 per eligible child. That is the maximum benefit that anyone can receive. And there's no proration of Sunbucks benefits. Um, if the child is eligible at any time during the year, they will receive the full $120 uh, benefit that corresponds to that eligibility. If they don't uh, meet the eligibility criteria, they will not receive uh, any benefit. And uh, the benefit itself is what we call SNAP-like. Um, it is basically exactly the same, uh, but it uh, has some additional um, parameters on how the benefit is handled itself. Uh, we'll go through a lot of the eligibility criteria here in just a second. Next slide, please. All right, so um, the Sunbucks program and its eligibility criteria provides for a number of different ways for someone to be found to be eligible to receive this benefit. And um, I think something that is a little bit exciting about Sunbucks eligibility is it's one of the first programs that we're familiar with in which um, your eligibility is basically automated. That's not the only way in which you can be eligible, but it is uh, one of the ways. So there is automatic eligibility based on whether a house, uh, whether a child is direct certified. And uh, the direct certification comes from being age six through 18 or enrolled in a school that participates in the National School Lunch Program. SNAP and TANF qualifies you for direct certification. Medicaid with qualifying income for the National School Lunch Program also qualifies you for direct certification. It's most categories of Medicaid, uh, PH95, uh, 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 Medicaid for children with disabilities not included um, because the income threshold can't be confirmed for direct certification. And CHIP does not qualify you for direct certification. So you, the, um, the age, range and receiving SNAP or TANF and or Medicaid uh, with qualifying income. That's one mechanism. Automatic eligibility can also be triggered based on information provided by the school. They must, uh, the child must be uh, attending an NSLP participating school. They must have been determined eligible for free or reduced price meals through an NSLP application, or they could be a uh, foster child, runaway, migrant, homeless, or participating in Head Start. But they, under all of those circumstances, must be uh, in an NSLP participating school. So those are the two automated ways in which you can become eligible for Sunbucks, and then there is a third mechanism in which you can be determined eligible for Sunbucks through a traditional application. Not that traditional because it's a brand new program, but it's a piece of paper that you fill out and you provide to DHS, and we will use that to determine your eligibility. Next slide, please. Carl, I do see a question in the chat about the age of the children we're referring to. Thought it might be good to clarify that on the front end. Well, the uh, thanks. The age the age is important. Um, if as you can see, the uh, child must be aged six through eighteen to receive eligibility through direct certification. If they're automatically eligible based on participation at, in the NSLP program at an NSLP participating school, that is not going to control. So that there are different ways with actually different age ranges in which you can be eligible. And we know that this is a complicated feature of this new federal program, and when we get a little further through this presentation, we have some mechanisms 
uh, to help you to understand better um, what what is taking place here. Okay. I want to talk a little bit about who must apply the people who will not automatically be granted eligibility. These are kids that attended a school that participates in the national school lunch program and they did not receive TANF or SNAP or Medicaid with qualifying income and they did not apply for or were not determined eligible for free and reduced price meals and they're not a foster child, homeless, migrant, or runaway. This is the inverse of which I showed you in the other place, but it, I think it's a helpful contrast to try and determine in the first place, does the child actually need to apply to receive this benefit? So the core thing here is that they need to attend uh, the school that participates in the National School Lunch Program and if they don't meet any of the other automatic eligibility criteria, then applying for the benefit uh, is the way to go. And we want to make very clear that if the child was not enrolled in a school that participates in NSLP, they cannot qualify for Sunbox through an application. Next slide, please. So this is another point we think is very important to emphasize because it is one of the major differences between SEBT and the former pandemic electronic benefit transfer program, which is that students receiving free and reduced price meals at community eligibility provision schools, these are NSLP schools in which all the children receive uh, free meals, they will not be automatically eligible for Sunbucks unless they meet one of the previous automated eligibility criteria. So they're the, uh, children at this school who um, are not getting SNAP or TANF, they don't have Medicaid with qualifying income, and um, they're not homeless, foster child, runaway, or migrant, they are going to need to apply. That is a, a major difference in this program that we want to make sure that everyone has eyes on. Next slide, please. So here's some information about um, the receipt of the benefit itself. If a child is eligible for Sunbucks and is actively receiving SNAP or TANF, that benefit, the $120 per child, will be issued to their regular EBT card and it will uh, go into the SNAP account. If a child is eligible for Sunbucks uh, through MA, so they have possibly the MA card, but it's not uh, an EBT card per se, they will get a Sunbucks card uh, sent to them. If the child's eligible for Sunbucks based on information submitted by the child's school because they are receiving national school uh, lunch program free and reduced price meals, that benefit will be loaded onto a Sunbucks card and sent to them. If a child's eligible through an application, uh, a Sunbucks specific card will be sent to them. We anticipate that benefits will begin being issued for the automated eligibility group in mid August and all other benefits will be issued by October. And before we, we get to it, I, I can sure I, I'm sure many of you are thinking this is a summer nutrition program. Uh, why is it that benefits will be issued in October? And um, I would just say to you that because this is the first year for which we are uh, operating and offering this program, we are certainly doing the best that we can on as uh, ex expedited a time frame as possible. And we do anticipate that in future years, benefits will be available prior to the summer operational period. Next slide, please. I want to talk a little bit more about the application uh, eligibility uh, because I think that, again, one of the specific components of this program that creates a challenge, I think, for people is that they, many people will receive the benefit automatically, but they might not know that that's the case. Um, and if they have to apply, they might not necessarily be thinking about it. If they do need to apply, those applications would go to the local county assistance office. The income limit on the application is 185% of the federal poverty limit. 
on these applications, we take self attestation of income and household composition. Um, that's similar to the, how the national school lunch program works, because remember, this is actually a child nutrition program. School enrollment is something that must be verified. Um, it's something that cannot be uh, uh, self attested and we will have mechanisms in order to verify that um, at the county assistance office. So it doesn't require uh, upon application, the provision of verifying information about school enrollment. And the application itself must be signed. Uh, that's something we also cannot get around. Next slide, please. So once we've received that application, we just want to give you some information about how we're going to be processing it because it is um, meaningfully different than the way that applications are processed for some of our other benefits that you may be familiar with. The first big one is that an application that we receive for SEBT can't be pended. Um, we receive it, we review it, and we either approve it or we reject it. And there are uh, these four reasons why that application might be rejected. The child is already eligible for Sunbucks, so they're um, one of the automated eligibility groups. The child is not enrolled in an NSLP participating school. The household is over the income limit and the application is not signed. And generally applications should be processed within 15 days. Next slide, please. This is another different component of the Sunbucks program. Uh, that we feel it's important to uh, share with you because it's similarly different uh, from our other benefits. Uh, a required component of the program is known as verification for cause. I think under our normal program benefits, you might think of this as kind of pending an application for verification and Sunbucks doesn't work like that. Verification for cause only applies to children who are eligible through a paper application. And if that if the worker handling the application has information that contradicts what's reported on the application, we process that application and we even approve the application, um, but the approved application is held until the verification for cause can be completed. And the worker will send a request for that verification to the household. Um, which will either be provided and the benefit will be released. And if it's not, it will be rejected and the household will not be eligible. They can reapply uh, at any time, but we want to talk a little bit about timeframes later because they are pertinent. Next slide, please. So on the program timeframe, again, this is unusual because it is uh, the first year for which this program is available. Um, and I don't know that we'll necessarily have the same timeline year over year. We already said we definitely intend to make benefit issuance much earlier in the next program year. But for this year, July 1, we intend to make paper applications available to the public. From August 10th to August 18th, we will begin issuing benefits to the automatically eligible population. On August 19th, the county assistance offices will begin application processing. On August 31st, that will be the last day in which we can accept paper applications for the 2024 program year. That means that if someone feels as though they need to submit a paper application in order to be eligible for Sunbucks and they want to receive a benefit for the summer operational period in 2024, that application must be submitted by August 31st. This is uh, a deadline uh, that is set uh, for this program uh, that we have to adhere to on a year over year basis. Um, on September 1, every application received on that day or later until the following year, um, those applications will be considered for the 2025 program year. So I think for the general public, the 831 deadline is quite important. On September 30th, that is our target deadline for all the 2024 program year application processing to be completed. And then on November 29th, it is the last day for 2024 program year Sunbucks appeals to be submitted. 
This is another distinctive difference between this program and some of the other programs that we operate. Many of our other programs have uh, deadlines relative to the date on which an action was taken in order for you to appeal. The Sunbucks program has a standardized deadline for appeals for a specific program year, and that's what we're outlining here. Finally, another distinctive difference between this program and SNAP or CASH, um, December 12th to December 19th is what we believe the time frame will be for unspent Sunbucks to be expunged from individuals, Sunbucks cards, or existing EBT accounts. This is another federal requirement which makes it distinct from uh, SNAP and CASH. Um, it has a four-month benefit expungement period uh, that's not something that is up to us. So um, if you are receiving Sunbucks on an existing EBT card, we will be setting it up so that the benefit issued first is the Sunbucks benefit so that people don't need to worry about hurrying up and spending their Sunbucks. That will go first if you receive uh, SNAP or cash, but there is this shortened time frame. So people with a standalone Sunbucks card absolutely need to make sure to expend those benefits uh, sooner rather than later. Next slide, please. I wanted to make sure that we level set with everyone here today about some of the challenges that we're expecting uh, for the Sunbucks program. Right off the bat, I think it's important to say that um, this is a minimum viable product for the first year. Um, and we've been working really hard because we know how important it is to get every um, food resource to children in need across our Commonwealth. Um, in future years, we expect to continue to enhance and iterate on the Sunbucks program uh, to make it uh, up to the same standards that you can expect from any of our other uh, child nutrition or public benefit programs. Um, but in this first year, there is no doubt that it, it will be a challenging transition to this new program. Um, so these are some of the things that we expect to be a challenge uh, kind of across the, the benefit system. Extraneous applications, as I think you know, you've probably come to realize as we describe the many ways in which someone can be found eligible for Sunbucks, there are probably people that will submit a paper application, even though they do not need to. Um, and that paper application that they've submitted, even though they didn't need to, will take up workers' time reviewing it and doing uh, their jobs to determine eligibility. That's going to happen. We have some tools we want to show you a little bit later. We hope will help cut down on that. Um, there is no legislatively required statewide enrollment or NSLP database for uh, Pennsylvania. And that is a challenge too, because the core, one of the core elements of eligibility for Sunbucks is NSLP enrollment. We have great partners with the uh, Central Susquehanna Intermediate Unit who are helping us to put together data from all the schools for the Sunbucks program so that we can issue a benefit um, because uh, student enrollment is a core element of eligibility, um, but that involves a lot of manual manipulation of files to make this work. Um, so that's certainly one of our bigger challenges. We talked about the challenges around community eligibility provisions, schools. Um, I, I do expect the application deadline is something that's going to be confusing to people. The fact that they need to, if they wish to receive a benefit in this program year, submit by 831, that's something we definitely want to get out there. And you're going to see that emphasized in our communications. Um, the fixed appeal deadline is very different. The self-attestation uh, on applications is very different. Uh, fixed expungement deadline we talked about. And then finally, in this first year, we do not have an online application uh, available for people to use. They will need to use a paper application. And also in the first year, we will have limited language availability ability for that paper application. On July 1, we will have English and Spanish applications available. We are in the process of developing additional language applications, but they are just not yet available um, for people in this first year. Next slide, please. I've also pulled from our website um, some of 
what I thought were the most helpful uh, FAQs, and we can jump over there when I'm when I'm done because I think they're worth talking through, and I, I definitely expect they're on people's minds. Um, what if a student household circumstance changed during the year? So maybe at the beginning of the year they were eligible for national school lunch program, uh, but later in the year their income increased or something like that. The way that the Sunbucks programs work. Uh, again, because the child nutrition program is that if they are found eligible at any point in the year, they will remain eligible for the entirety of the program year. Um, if something changes in their public benefit household, they should always report that change. That's a requirement of the program, and there's mechanisms listed here on how they can do that, and many uh, public benefits recipients are familiar with that process. Will all children in a household get the benefit on the same card? So uh, we do hope to be able to issue all of the benefits on a single uh, Sunbucks card, but it is possible that if the children qualify in different ways, they may have to be issued separate cards. Again, this is contingent on the information we have available to us when we uh, get the eligibility information. So we're going to certainly attempt to put all of the benefits on the same card where it's possible to do so. Next slide, please. What should a household do if they believe they would receive an automated benefit, but they do not receive one? I, I'm sure this is going to be a very persistent question. Um, benefits, like I said, will be distributed around mid-August, and all issuances will be completed by October of 2024. If they believe they're entitled to an automatic uh, benefit, we'd encourage them to contact the statewide customer service center. We have the phone number here um, and they can tell you over the line if that is if, if the person is entitled to an automated benefit or not. What should a household do if they receive benefits for one child, but not another? So uh, uh, children that are siblings might get the benefits at different times. Again, this is a contingent on the mode at which uh, different children become eligible. Some children younger than six or older than 18 may not be eligible, as we talked about, and um, even if another child in that household is eligible. Uh, we'll say this many times, but uh, if there is a question that a household has, we definitely encourage them to contact the statewide customer service center. Next slide, please. What should a household do if they were denied but believe they were eligible? So this is another area where I think it's a little bit different than uh, current benefits uh, that you might receive from DHS. Oftentimes, you know, if there's something we need from you, we were able to send you a pending verification letter for the Sunbucks program. Uh, if, for example, the information we have indicates that the person was not enrolled in a, a school, uh, providing NSLP benefits uh, during that program year, that household will, will be denied. Um, and the household who says, well, I was enrolled in school, would need to appeal that eligibility determination to say, no, I, I should receive this benefit. And then they would just say, here's the report card indicating that I was in fact eligible to receive uh, these benefits. What should a household do if they lose the Sunbucks card? Certainly happens, and uh, replacements requests can be made by contacting the county assistance office or the statewide customer service center. Next slide, please. I think this is kind of the, the biggest question of all uh, with a new program. Where can households receive assistance with the Sunbucks program? We've said it several times, it's worth repeating. The CAO or the Statewide Customer Service Center is the right entity to contact with questions that people have about their individual eligibility. And we wanna make a point to emphasize that schools are not able to assist households with Sunbucks programming questions. PDE is not able to assist households with uh, Sunbucks programming questions. It is really the uh, statewide customer service center and the county ass assistance office that people should contact. They are responsible for determining eligibility. Next slide, please. So these are some resources that I want to jump to. Um, I hope you don't mind, uh, Dawn. I want to go off book a bit to pull this up. Uh, do you mind if I share my screen? 
I do not mind. Do I need All to right. probably unshare mine? Here we go. Oh, there we do you go. have visibility on this? I do. Great. So I'm just doing a screen share on the PADHS page for Sunbucks. There is a lot of really good information on here. I pulled many of the frequently asked questions from this page. Um, obviously, we made eligibility front and center because, as we've said, it is a um, challenging uh, program to kind of wrap your mind around because it is so different. But we've tried to lay that out as best we can and provide information um, on how to apply. You can see that here today, um, application is coming in July, which is what we've, we've talked about. And then there's a large accordion me menu of a number of frequently asked questions that we didn't uh, discuss necessarily today. Um, the last thing that I want to show you that I think we're really excited about and we hope will be very helpful to people um, interested in the Sunbucks benefit is um, something that uh, Code PA put together for us. We're very grateful for their help called the Sunbucks Eligibility Navigator. It has this uh, pull out menu, and this is a mechanism that you can use to determine if you will receive a benefit automatically or if you will need to apply uh, for the Sunbucks benefit on paper and walks you through a series of questions to give you kind of the right uh, direction. Was your child enrolled in a school that participates in NSLP and had access to those meals? Let's say our child did. Did you receive TANF or SNAP? If you say, yes, you did, and you hit next, what you'll find is that based on the response you provided, your child is automatically eligible. That's what we talked about with the direct certification group. And it directs you back. Um, I'll show you a different uh, version of this. We'll get a different response here in a second. All right. Enrolled? Yes. Enrolled in SNAP or TANF? No. Did your child receive free or reduced price meals? So this would say that. Um, it's asking essentially, is your kid going to be in the uh, automatically eligible grouping uh, based on their uh, NSLP receipt? I'll just say did not receive lunch. Based on the response you provided, your child is not automatically eligible for Sunbucks. In order to receive the benefit, you will have to apply. And then I'll, I'll show you one more um, version of this, though, of course, there's a lot of different potential flows you might find. See if we can get it to come up. Was your child enrolled in the school? Let's go with not sure. This provides by county, by school, the ability to designate um, where you were enrolled in the school. We worked with um, PDE to put this together. So I'll just pick a school district in Dauphin County. And you can see it's at the school level. So Central Dolphin Senior High School. That is an NSLP participating school, so it, it jumped to a uh, question around, did you receive SNAP or TANF or Migrant Foster? We'll say no. How did your child receive free or reduced meals? Applied. All the kids get lunch, did not receive free lunch. We say all the kids get free lunch. See what we get. Based on the response provided, your child is not automatically eligible in order to receive the benefit. You'll have to apply. So you can work your way through a number of the different flows here that will give you correct elig general eligibility information about the Sunbucks benefit. And we hope that this will really um, simplify an understanding of elig individual level eligibility for people uh, in this in this new program. I'm going to uh, exit from this and uh, rejoin the slides. But that's what we wanted to present to you today about this brand new program, SCBT. I wanna take a minute to say thanks to all the hard work that's been done by PDE and the DHS staff to make this benefit available as soon as was possible um, for this year. It's a priority of the Shapiro administration to ensure that kids get access to the feeding resources um, that make sure that they can live, you know, safe, healthy, and learning lives.
Thanks, Dawn. Thank you. Um, so now we can transition, <clears throat> excuse me, into the questions and answers. I do want to kind of look at some of the questions. Thank you all for putting them as they come to you into the chat. Um, I believe we've addressed a couple of them. Um, let me see here. Uh, questions about will the slides be available and the recording of the meeting? Are those something are those things that can be made available on the DHS website? We can just make the slides of, in the recording available. Okay, great. Um, we had a question about multiple districts. Yeah, and again, it goes back to where um, your your kids uh, meals, uh, you know, where they're uh, signed up for for school and where they receive their meals. Um, let's see. Are there flyers uh, that we can hang out in libraries? I think this sort of, sort of underscores the the point of as it being a new program, um, maybe a little more about kind of outreach or or what can be done um, to make sure people know about this this program. Um, I'm not the uh, right person, I guess, at the department to to say what will be available in terms of public outreach information, but I do think that we we hope to have materials that can be used to spread the word about this new program. And I would also point out that the uh, U.S. Department of Agriculture, Food and Nutrition Services has a pretty evergreen toolkit uh, to disseminate information generally about Sunbucks, which um, you know, not only will it last for a long time for this program, it's it's broadly applicable across multiple states. Yeah, I would always ju also just add, you know, outside of of the outreach efforts of of the state, um, you know, obviously the, info, the I think the website is <clears throat> the website is really robust. So sharing that in your community, in your in at your institution, and things like that is is a good is a good way to go. Um, is it safe to assume that local offices will have extra cards available for if a family loses theirs? Um, so the SCBT cards will not be printed at the county assistance office. So there will not be cards available at the county assistance office if you're receiving a standalone SCBT card. If you uh, have an issue with your existing SNAP or cash SCB, uh, so not SCB, SNAP or cash card, that can be addressed at the county assistance office. Um, and with the paper applications, will they be distributed out to community partners as well or only available at the county uh, assistance offices? The paper applications will be uh, made available online and they can be disseminated um, for anyone who needs to use them. Great. Do you know if students who are uh, automatically eligible who are automatically eligible for Sunbox or families with SNAP and eligible students will receive their benefits earlier. Uh, yeah, I think it's just like reiterate the timing of who will receive the benefits when for this yeah, first year. That's yeah. right. Individuals with automatic eligibility will receive their benefits earlier um, than individuals who are applying on a paper application. The whole process of eligibility distribution, we expect to move up in future years again, hoping to get before the summer operational period. But I think it's always going to be the case that the automated eligibility um, gets uh, issued out before the paper application goes because we always want to make sure that um, we're not uh, making errors in payment where somebody who has gotten an automatic eligibility is then getting a duplicative uh, benefit that they're not entitled to because they also applied on paper. And for those who aren't automatically enrolled, is it is it that the benefits will be distributed by the 30th of September or in October? Um, excuse me. The benefits uh, should be distributed by the end of the federal fiscal year, which is essentially September 30th, but it is possible that we might roll over into the following month. So if the general question is, do you think it's going to be the beginning of the month or the end of the month? We think it's going to be the beginning of the month. Okay. And again, with the public outreach, do you know if there are plans to have a social media toolkit uh, with Pennsylvania specific information that can be shared amongst, you know, that can be shared on social media? 
Um, I think we do hope to have a Pennsylvania set of outreach materials, but I can't speak to when that will become available. Okay. Um, other questions, we ran through the ones that are in the chat. Um, feel free to raise your hand or add, continue to add questions in the chat. Um, there's one, uh, if a household gets a letter stating their children will be eligible, but the children listed includes a child who isn't in their household in lieu of their child, what should they do? Is so, SCSC able to do anything to correct this before benefits are issued? So for anyone who has issued a, a letter uh, that had or maybe the right way to address this is simply to say that um, DHS in anticipation of uh, the direct certification group of automatic eligibility receiving benefits sent letters to households letting them know that this was the case. This is not a notice um, saying, you know, here's the information and, and it will not change. It's a letter saying that they we anticipate that they're going to get a benefit. We made a mistake and uh, improperly put uh, the mailing file together that has been fixed and we are resending letters to those households for which there was an error. This will have no bearing on households getting the proper benefit. The, the mailing of that letter is completely separate from the benefit process and the error uh, that led to that is not associated with the benefit issuance at all. Great. Other questions? Does anyone, are there others from uh, state agencies that, you know, have anything you would like to share? I had a couple of questions. I, I, you know, while we're while we're, um, you know, here, um, one question I had is just to to um, just confirm that this is a permanent uh, program. This isn't, you know, sort of like on a couple of years or something. This is this will be a feature of uh, Pennsylvania Child Nutrition going forward. So it, it was authorized by Congress as a permanent program. The state needs to opt in every year. Maybe I guess I'm getting ahead of myself by saying that, you know, in next year, in the year following, but uh, I anticipate that, um, you know, unless there was some major change in administrative priorities, this will remain a program for Pennsylvania. Right, because I'm realizing, you know, we, we, uh, we do know that other states, I, I can't remember at this point how many states have chosen not to opt in so we do know that that's a possibility if, if there's administration change and like you mentioned uh priority change good to know um i had a question just around oh evaluation since this is sort of the first year and you anticipate a variety of you know hiccups and, and ironing out just the, the way not that you were anticipating hiccups, but just that, you know, it's a new process. There will be things that we need to iron out as we go. What does the evaluation of the program look like? And are there opportunities um, for uh, families or service providers to share their feedback? Um, so, you know, that could be compiled and sort of like, you know, taken into consideration as the program evolves. I mean, we have mechanisms to collect information and evaluate the program. Uh, generally speaking, there are reports that we will have to generate and provide to USDA on the program. Um, we are monitoring our um, call lines pretty much all the time to see like what is driving interest. Um, I can tell you for sure that we're going to be looking very closely on how many extraneous paper applications uh, are we receiving? And then if, uh, we also have is our, our uh, income maintenance advisory committee that meets quarterly and uh, is available for consumers of uh, public benefits programs to talk about um, things that come up. So um, there are many avenues uh, that people can use to kind of share um, their experience and for us to evaluate how it's going. Wonderful. Um, a question, will uh, county assistance offices have paper applications readily available and will there be assistance provided at the offices? I assume assistance filling out the application. Yes, there will be um, paper applications 
um, at the county assistance office, uh, the larger ones will uh, have uh, applications uh, shipped to them and then uh, smaller ones will probably do a print on demand. And maybe this is a naive question, but I assume there's somewhere you can print off an application um, off the website. You don't have to go to the office to receive the physical paper. That's, that that's right. The The okay. web page right now, um, it says, I think, actually, I'll just look at it again. Um, if you scroll down to apply for Sunbucks, it's actually in a call out box. It says application coming in July 2024. When the application launches on July 1, the link will be there and people can um, print that out for themselves if that's what they'd prefer to do. They can you know, walk it into the building when the CAO is open. Uh, our county assistance offices have drop boxes outside of them so they can just kind of walk up and put it in the box and go on their way if they like, um, or they could even mail it to the county assistance office. So um, there's a number of mechanisms for them to do that. Okay, great. It looks like someone just looked at the toolkit and there's information and a logo for the program. I assume that's the USDA um, toolkit. Um, and I know, you know, some states, I, I was in a presentation of the logo and the branding, and there is sort of branding that the um, that the USDA has has shared. Some states have opted to do something different. Is Pennsylvania going with the, I saw it on the navigator, so it looks like. We are going, using the USDA yeah. branding, yes. Okay. Great, thank you. Um, let's see, are children younger than school age eligible, eligible? And if not, might the program be expanded to include them in the future? Maybe I misunderstood, but it sounded like only children age six to 18 who are or were enrolled in primary or secondary school receive the benefit. I was curious about that too. Gen generally speaking, that age range is about right for, mo for most kids. Um, the core element is enrollment in a national school lunch program providing school. The six to 18 age range is if you're automatically eligible based on direct certification. So you can potentially be a little bit outside of that range if you're getting automatic eligibility um, from uh, NSLP or uh, if you uh, file an application, but they need to be enrolled uh, in an NSLP providing school. So for example, pre-K, it's no, we cannot provide SEBT for that or um, uh, other lower uh, age ranges, and that's a federal requirement. Okay. Uh, what paperwork will someone need to take with them to the county assistance office to fill out the application? Good question. Yeah, the, I, I think this comes from kind of familiarity with our uh, regular the, um, handled public benefits. Um, you don't need to take any additional um, paperwork with you. Like for, I've said, for this benefit, if, you're, if you are filling out a paper application, we take self-attestation of your household composition on the application. We take self-attestation of your income. You have to sign it. And we have a mechanism to check to see that you're enrolled um, uh, in school, which is that other eligibility criteria. So simply kind of picking up the application, filling it out, and handing it in is sufficient. There are, I guess I should also mention, um, in addition to the application itself, which has some useful um, uh, instruction information, uh, there's also uh, to be available a set of application directions that might be helpful to people that will also be available when the application becomes available. Great. Um, for those with transportation issues or do not have a computer, will the county assistance office mail out these paper applications to people? I think we would handle this as we would for any other benefits, and we do uh, send uh, applications out in the mail uh, for those. So I think we would do the same for this. Thank you for asking that. That's a great point. Any other questions? Um, one other question I had, and I just don't know how this works with homeschooling. Um, maybe you. How does that work if you have a homeschooled child? Is that you need to be enrolled in uh, a school that's providing uh, NSLP? Uh, so if you are homeschooled, uh, that uh, would not qualify you for uh, uh, SEBT, and that's uh, again a requirement of the program. Gotcha. Okay. Um... All 
Great. Any other questions? It looks like we've we've answered the questions. I'm sure as you take a look at the website um, and you know give this further thought and the wheels start turning on this program, you will have other questions. It did uh, look like uh, the uh, state um, customer service uh, number. I'm, I'm hoping that's prominently featured on <laughs> on your website um, is the place to go with with all questions. Is that is that right, Carl? Yes, the the statewide customer okay. service center is going to be the the best place to answer individual eligibility questions that households have. I just actually had another question come to mind, which is are the I'm assuming the community assistance offices are being trained in this program and I don't I don't know how that works within how you all do that within DHS, but do you have more information on that? Our county assistance offices staffed with um, income maintenance caseworkers, they are eligibility uh, professionals and we provide them with our policy and uh, training on how to administer the program. Great. Awesome. Well, um, one last chance if you have any questions. Otherwise, I, I really thank you so much, Carl, and your, your whole team um, in DHS and our, our partners in the Department of Education as well. I know this was a, quite a sprint to get this stood up for this year. And while it is unfortunate we can't, you know, have the disbursement sooner during summer, I think it's better to have them um, and, and be able to take advantage of this opportunity at the earliest possible moment. So thank you so much for, for working so hard for Pennsylvania's kids. And um, please uh, feel free to reach out to me if you'd like to get involved in the Food Policy Council, and we're, we're, we're always here to support um, in any way the development and, um, you know, continue feedback on this, this amazing program. Thank you, Dawn. Thank you for convening the group to talk about this. Have a good day, everyone. Absolutely. Have a great day, everyone.